Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start by going back to the simplest statistical model we considered when we first introduced the idea of data analysis and statistical models, which is just imagine I have one data point Y uh, that has a simple mean, mu, and the standard deviation, sigma. And I'm going to ask, uh, what's the probability of generating this one single Y data point given a specific choice of mean and standard deviation. So how do we estimate mu and sigma? So we said that we think of y as being distributedly normally around a specific mean, sigma, and sorry, mean, mu, and sigma standard deviation. And that tilde we would read as distributed as. And so we can, it's equivalent of saying that our likelihood is a normal distribution where we're asking about the probability of gener generating data point Y given a specific choice of mean and standard deviation. So to proceed forward, we then need to go and look up the equation for what a normal distribution actually looks like. And so that's this. It's uh, gonna be a, a function that we're gonna become more and more familiar looking at, not one that I would ever expect anyone to memorize. It's one that's great to be able to look up though. So the core of it is you have uh, the difference between your data and your mean squared, uh, and that squared error essentially is normalized by the variance, and then it's in an exponent. And then there's this constant out front, and that constant just ensures that if you integrate this thing, it integrates to one. Because remember, one of our definitions of a probability theory, uh, probability distribution, is it must uh, and it must be positive and integrate to one. And so all this out front is just a constant that ensures that this integrates to one. Okay. So we would then ask what value maximizes uh, the likelihood? Apologies for that A there. Uh, made some changes. Didn't catch that one. Okay. So A, mu, mean, how do we figure out how to maximize this likelihood? That's really the central question here. And to, to maximize the likelihood, we're gonna actually resort to, initially resort to some concepts that we're gonna take from calculus about how to maximize things. And if you've been exposed to calculus, you probably had drilled into your head the way that we minimize or maximize any function is that we take the log of it. So we take the derivative of it, apologies. You take the derivative of the thing you want to maximize with respect to the variable you're trying to maximize. And then we set that equal to zero. So we're going to maximize the likelihood by taking the derivative of the likelihood with respect to the parameter we're interested in, in this case, mu, and set that to zero. Cool. So let's walk through that. So again, here's our equation for our normal likelihood. Um, by convention in statistics, one of the things we often do is work with log likelihoods. And that seems like an unintuitive thing right now, uh, but just go with it for, for the minute uh, because it's something that's gonna actually make the math easier in the long run. Uh, it may seem odd to think that logarithms would ever make math easier, but in this case, they definitely do. So actually before taking the derivative, I'm actually gonna start by taking the log. So if this was the likelihood, the log of the likelihood, uh, so first we have our normalizing constant out front, which involves a uh, square root of something in the denominator. So that square root, you know, this is raised to the power of one half, it's the denominator. So it's raised to the power of the minus one half. So we get this minus one half out front. And then we just have the log of what's in the denominator, this two pi sigma squared. So our normalizing constant in the log is just minus one half log two pi sigma squared. And that's the hard part. The easier half of this, if we take the log of the exponent, they just cancel out and we just get our uh, squared error uh, divided by two sigma squared. Cool. So now we have the log likelihood. Word, and actually one of the nice things about logs is since it's a monotonic transformation, we can take the log without changing where the maxima or minima of a function is. So the maxima of the likelihood and the maximum of the log likelihood are going to be in the same place. 
cool. So then we're going to take the derivative of this log with respect to mu. Apologies, I've again missed an A there. Um, we're going to take the derivative with respect to mu. So this normalizing constant out front does not have a mu in it. So the log of the derivative of that uh, is just zero. So that was easy. Uh, so we take the derivative of the other half with respect to mu. So we have a two in the exponent, so that comes out front. We'll cancel with the two in the denominator. Uh, and then we take the derivative of what's inside the parenthesis. So the y, derivative of the y is zero, the derivative of uh, minus mu is just minus one. So we'll stick a minus one out front. That'll cancel it with this, this minus y, minus one. And we'll just be left with y minus mu over sigma squared equals zero. So a lot of things simplified down to a pretty simple statement. So now we can actually pretty easily do the algebra to solve for mu. So if we multiply both sides by sigma squared, it goes away. So we learned that uh, the mean doesn't actually depend on our choice of variance. And then we just get, are left with y minus mu equals zero. Move the minus mu to the other side, y equals mu. Uh, and so we, we get uh, analytically a, a pretty intuitive result, which is uh, if we only have one data point, uh, our most likely choice of mean, the mean most likely to have generated that data point would be a, a normal distribution centered on that one observation. Uh, and if, if you've participated in the 375 discussion, hands-on discussions, uh, we actually came to that same conclusion numerically when we actually evaluated that normal density over a whole sequence of uh, proposed means. And we saw visually the shape of that likelihood surface. And we saw that mu, setting the, the mean equal to the one data point at 1.5 actually was the one that thing that maximized it. Cool. So that's the basics of how we maximize the likelihood with one point. I'm gonna, in the next lecture, go to a much more realistic situation, but still a pretty simple model, which says, what if we have more than one data point?